Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about ways that you can support someone you love or know who's been diagnosed with breast cancer. I'll talk a little bit about ways to talk with people, listen with people, things you can do to help, and how to take care of yourself. It's possible that the person you know recommended you watch this video. This is really great that you are. The first thing to know in helping somebody with breast cancer is that there's a lot we don't know. Everybody's different. How they feel, how they're coping, what they need varies from person to person. So you might talk with a friend or your loved one's doctor and they may say these are helpful tips. But really the only way to know is to ask. How are you doing? What do you need from me? How can I help? Those are all things that are really wonderful. I do need to let you know, you may hear, I don't know how I'm feeling. I don't know what I need. I don't know what you can do to help. Your just being there is a big part of helping them get through this and not running away if they push you away or don't bring you close. It's not about you. It's about them and where they are at this moment. It's important to know that people's feelings are going to change over time. So after surgery, they may want to be waited on hand and foot. But once they're up and about, that can actually be pretty annoying. So it's really good to check in. Watch those verbals and nonverbals. Don't try to read too much into it, but see how they respond when you do something. And try not to take it personally. It's really important to let people know that it's okay to feel how they feel and try to avoid doing the at least. At least it's breast cancer. At least it was caught early. At least you can have chemotherapy. At least you don't need chemotherapy. Can you see where I'm going? This really puts people in a position of feeling that they are less than and their experience is less than somebody else. Of course, it can always be worse. Things can always be worse that doesn't mean that we're happy with the way things are. So what I've learned from my patients, and anything I say on this that's helpful, I've learned from my patients. Anything I say that's not is my own. But basically, people don't want to be told how to feel, and it's very normal and very okay for them to be scared and angry and depressed and full of rage and wanting to be in denial. All that is normal, and all you need to do is sit with them and say, I see this. I see you the way you are. I'm here with you. That's all you need to do. If they ask for space, give it to them with grace, and I'll get to a minute how you can take care of yourself. That's important too. It's important that you fill up your bucket with resources, information, and support. It's very likely you're angry, you're scared, you're depressed. And it's okay. This is somebody you love. This is your daughter, your friend, your parent, your sister, your, your partner. And of course you have all those feelings. It's important that you let yourself have those too. People are going to say, at least it was caught early. And inside you're going to say, yes, it was, and I'm still scared. It's not an either or. So find people who can just sit and listen to you, and then you can be there for your loved one or your friend. Now, what if you're at work and you hear this through the grapevine or you overhear somebody talking or you see an email or a text, this is how we live today, or something pops on in somebody's email while you're on Zoom, right? What do you do? It's important that not everybody wants everybody to know. It's important we respect people's privacy. On the other hand, if this is a public secret, so to speak, you don't have to avoid the conversation. You don't have to help them feel like you're going to ignore it or you're not there for them. So you can say, heard something through the grapevine. Is it okay if we talk about it? And then listen to what they say. They might say, yes. What have you heard? And you can tell them what you've heard. And check in again. Is it okay if we talk more about this? If they say, I don't know what you're talking about, or they look cross or frightened, you can say, I'm here if you need me and just leave it at that. It's not about you, right? You want to help them. 
Now, if you hear through the grapevine and you hear rumors start to pass along, you can demonstrate integrity and compassion by nipping that in the bud and not spreading it further. And again, find your own support. Maybe you've been through breast cancer and you think you can help them. Or maybe you went through a breast cancer scare or you have a family member with breast cancer. This is going to bring your own feelings up too. So take care of yourself. Now, a lot of people want to know what should they not do. That's really hard, right? It's like knowing what should I do, what should I not do. One thing we don't want to do is infantilize the people we love. Don't treat them like they're children, that they don't know what they want, that they don't know how they're feeling. It's okay for them to be in charge of all of that, and different people are different. So your loved one may say, I really need your help, or you pick up that they do, and another person you love may say, I'm good, I'm cool, because it's really important to them to maintain this, I'm on top of everything, and you might be surprised just holding that with them, they might at some point totally let down, let go, and cry. And that's a sign of strength. One thing you can do when people cry is tell them, I'm here with you. Tears are a sign of strength. It's how we get strong. I've covered a whole lot of things, and I'm really happy you're watching this video. It shows how much you love and care about the person in your life going through breast cancer. Thank you.